Okay, so now that we have whoop, an idea of what the definitions are, all right, now that we have an idea what the definitions are, I am a mess right now. It's my first day back too. Here we go. Good. Now that we have a handle on the definitions, okay, why do I even need to bother sorting these? What's the whole point of me even needing to do that? To list it in a group. Any sort is to list it in a group. Now the reason that I need to separate these into groups is because these are all what we're calling stem changers. Because there's no rhyme or reason otherwise as to why I'm giving you these words. Typically, our list would have some sort of theme, right? Whether it be telling time, colors, number, whatever. And those things would fall into that category. You can't really put these under a category other than they're all verbs, but now they're also all stem changers. So what exactly does that mean? Okay, typically, a quote unquote normal verb. When I go to conjugate it, I need to do what four things? First of all, we define it always. Step two would be to what? Drop the end in. Step three becomes. Fill chart with the stem, which is what's left after we drop the ending. And then finally, we would add the new ending. With our stem changer, we're going to need to add a step between two and three. Okay? For a stem changer, I'm still going to define it first. I'm still going to drop the ending. However, my new step three is to change the stem. Then we're going to fill the chart, and then we're finally going to add the ending. Here's the good thing. For 99% of this, your endings are going to be the same, with a couple of irregularities, because there's always something that's irregular. Okay? What we have to be weary of now is that we have this extra step that affects the stem, okay? So what we need to understand is how to identify the stem change and where do we do it? Now here's the thing. These are sorted by stem change type. Okay, so these four categories are the types of stem changes you have. Here's the problem. There's no rhyme or reason. It's not like I can tell you these are E to I, E because. They're, they're just, it's just the way they are. And we got to know that, and we got to know that they are what they are. That's why it's important for us to sort them. But also it makes it tricky because, again, you can't just categorize them and look at them and say, okay, it's this, therefore it's this. And so I'm not going to ask you to memorize which ones go where, but you do need to realize how to handle them. All right? So the rule of thumb is this. The stem change occurs in the last audible vowel 
of the stem. What do I mean by audible? That you can hear. So the last vowel I can hear is where I need to make my chain. Here's the good thing. For a lot of these, not all of them, for a lot of these, once you drop the ending, you're only left with one vowel. You can only, you can only ever change a vowel, right? And you can only ever use the identified changes, okay? So that's what makes your life a little bit easier. A little bit easier. So we're going to start with an easy one. All right. Let's work with servir. Okay. Now let's follow our rules here. Let's follow our process. All right. Servir. What's step one? Definition. What does servir mean? To serve. Okay? Now, here's where we have to be careful. When I drop my ending, what am I left with? Before we start making any changes, when I drop my ending, I'm left with sem. Looks like serve, minus the E. Okay? Now, look at your rule. Stem change occurs in the last audible vowel. Now, we're lucky here because how many vowels are left? Just one. So, according to my sort, I change my E to what? Not just I, IE. So, really, what I'm doing is I'm adding. An I, but the change is E to IE. So my new stem then becomes sieve. That's now my new stem for my word. So if we go over to step three, this is step three. I've changed my stem. That's why it's a stem changer. Typically, we don't touch this. Typically, we throw it in the chart, add my new endings, move on. Now, this is my extra step. And because it's an E to I, E, or I'm sorry, E to I, rather, I was in the wrong spot. E to I, that's my fault. I was in the wrong spot. E to I, it's just E to I, C you. Okay? So now my new stem becomes... Sieve, 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 sieve. Notice where I didn't put the stem change. Where did I not put the stem change? In the cross spot. Well, in the cross spot, mm -hmm. but where else? In the nosotros form, because my last rule is the nosotros does not change. It stays what it's always been. Okay? From here, I can just go into my IR ending format. Okay? In the yo form, I would have what? Oh, so sirvo to you what? Yes, sirves. L A N Sirvent. Nothing changes here, so it's still Servimos. And then ellos es ustedes sirve. So nothing, my endings are not affected by anything yet. None of that's happening, none of that's changing. Okay? What is happening now is that now I've got. That. Okay? Right?
again, all we're doing is just adding an additional step to something that we've already done based on our rules. Okay? So if we were to try a different word, let me give you something with multiple vowels, but still not crazy. All right. Um, all right. So let's do, let's go to the IE section. Okay. So let's do get in. Okay, let's work through it like we fit. What's get in mean? To want. Okay, I drop my ending. What am I left with? Q U E R. Now, how many vowels are there? Two. Can I really hear the U in can? No, I hear that E sound. Right? That S sound tells me that's where my change is happening. Also, is there anything sorted into changing a U into anything? No. So I wouldn't use it there anyway. It's a vowel. A, I can't hear it. It's not audible. Second, it's not even factoring into one of our stem changes right now. All right? So it's in the E to I E category. So my new stem is spelled how? Q U I E R. Q U I E R. Q Right? And I go quiero across the board with the exception of nosotros. And it's an ER verb, so you'll what? Quiero tu quieres el ella. Quiere, no change here, so it stays queremos. Ellos es ustedes quieren. All right? We get the gist? All right? Again, the importance of having this sorted is so that it gives you a reference. So that you can look at your verb and say, okay, according to my rules, this is what I do. All right. Typically, we can just say that it's the last vowel, typically. But we do have to be careful because that's not the true rule. The true rule is the last audible vowel. All right. Because you get in a situation like, I'm not going to go through the whole chart, but just so that you can um, see what I'm saying, you have con, se, gim. Okay. I drop my IR, what am I left with? Conseg. Okay, there's three vowels there. What's the last vowel I can hear? The E. So my change is here. All right, a lot of people try to throw it in here because we do have an O to U E. No good. All right. Also, I can't hear the U. It's essentially silent in this situation. That GU combo in Spanish is a little different. All right? So my stem change would then become right? So just to kind of give you the idea, okay? It's the la typically it's the last vowel. But it's the last vowel we can hear because you do have a couple words like that. That's why the audible part's important. But for 90% of these, it's usually the last one. Okay? Questions? 